Hello and welcome to this big budget breakdown video for backpackers in Colombia. If you're planning a trip to Colombia but you're not entirely sure how much the trip is going to cost you, this is the video for you. So in this video we're going to be having a look at exactly how much I spent in my time in Colombia, analyse that for a bit in ways that I could have improved, and then we'll go on to how you can calculate your own budget for your own trip, depending on your style and preference of backpacking, because we're all different. Before we get started, I just want to point out that the budget that I'm referring to in this video is everything that you'll spend once you have arrived in Colombia. It does not account for your flights to and from the country, or your travel insurance, or visas, or equipment like your backpack, etc. And it also doesn't account for tangible purchases that I made in Colombia, for example, clothes and souvenirs, because for me, that stuff comes out of like a separate budget in my life. I also want to make a disclaimer that if you've watched my vlogs, you may have noticed I disclosed when I had a few things gifted. For example, I had a few gifted hostel stays and activities. I have put those costs in my spreadsheet as if I was a normal paying backpacker. So the prices that I'm giving you are the realistic prices that you would be paying if you did the exact same trip as me. And one last thing, I'm gonna be talking in the currency of Great British Pounds. So if you operate in another currency, you could just use the XE currency app or something like that to convert the figures into to your own local currency or just straight into Colombian pesos since that is what you're going to be paying in when you get to Colombia. I have got into the habit of thoroughly tracking my spending when I go backpacking. One, to make sure that I am on track with the budget that I have planned for. And two, to analyse my spending and to look at it from a bigger perspective, where I'm spending a lot of money and where I can make improvements. So my budget that I set myself before I went to Colombia was £1,000 a month. I actually set myself the budget of £35 a day, which is £1,050 pounds per month. But anyway, let's see how I did. I ended up being in Colombia for 93 days, which is just over three months, and I spent £3,153.56. And that averages at £34 per day. And that includes everything that I did in the country, all my accommodation, all my travel, all my food, even like my salsa school and my Spanish classes. Total. But I wasn't always on track for being on track. I'm about to show you my top secret magical computer space. That is my budget tracker spreadsheet. And you're about to see the roller coaster that was my spending in Colombia. So to give you a little overview, obviously from left to right, you can see the date. I input the location I was mainly in that day, accommodation costs, travel costs, food costs, activity costs, then the total for the day, and then that total converted into Great British Pounds. And then these final columns, on the left we have how much over or under budget I was that day. If it's red, that is how much I went over, my £35 per day. If it's green, that's how much I was under budget that day. And then on that right column we have my running tracker, so not my running spending total, but basically if I was on track. If it was red, then I am not on track and I need to cut back. If it was green, then I'm on track and don't need to be concerned about my spending. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of red, especially on the right-hand column. That running tracker just keeps going up and up and up. And it wasn't until I got to Medellin where it spikes at just over 260 pounds over budget, I was like, right, something needs to change here because whatever I'm doing right now, it's not working for me and my budget. So I looked at my spending and I was like, right, what can I realistically change? I couldn't change the travel cost because I always just traveled where I needed to get to. I obviously took public transport wherever possible and Uber and taxis were always my second option. I didn't want to change up my accommodation options because staying in nice clean hostels is what really keeps me sane. And I didn't think I was being unreasonable there. So that brings us to food. Mm. I'm in a country where the food can be so cheap and yet I'm eating in fancy restaurants almost every single day. This is definitely something I can change. And as for activities, most of that I can't change or won't change because your activities is most of the fun when you're backpacking. But I do count my alcohol spending as an activity and I had some days where I was spending like double the amount on alcohol than I was on my accommodation that night. And it's because I'm a fancy bitch who likes to buy cocktails, but that is something that I can change. And so quite literally, just by being more aware of where I was eating and how much I was spending on my alcohol, my budget started to go down. Of course, some days I still went over if I did a big activity or did something a bit more expensive, but that wasn't every day. But on the whole, my budget was going down and lo and behold, just two days before the end of my trip, I reached under my tracking budget goal. And oh baby, what a feeling. So what does all of this mean for you? 
I believe there is a scale, a backpacker financial scale, where on the left you have the budget backpacker. A true budget backpacker will always do everything in the absolute cheapest way possible. Absolute cheapest hostel in the area, cheapest modes of transport, they will avoid taxis or any kind of private transport to save money, they will almost always eat local with street food or buying bits at the supermarket to cook in the hostel, making the most of any free food or meals that the hostel might be offering, and as for activities will mainly just engage in the free activities like hiking or swimming or sightseeing, and they may occasionally spend money on activities if they deem it really worth it, and they will pretty much only drink beers in terms of alcohol. And on the other end of the scale we have the flash packer. A flash packer will always stay in the nicest hostels irrespective of their price. They not always but often might choose a private room for their comfort and sanity. They will take public transport where it is easy or just for longer journeys but they will not hesitate to hop in a taxi where it is convenient and they almost definitely would favour a flight over a really long bus. They eat wherever they want within reason, they will eat in restaurants for probably most meals, they don't hold back on activities and that doesn't mean that they're necessarily signed up to an expensive and wild activity every day or that they can't do free activities but when a core cool opportunity comes about they won't be hesitating to sign up and perhaps picking the most luxurious option. And finally they drink whatever they want. Beers, wine, cocktails, treat yourself. And then in the middle we have the average backpacker. An average backpacker is certainly very aware of their spendings but where they deem necessary will happily pay for convenience and to have a good time. They normally stay in mid-range hostels or perhaps the cheapest room in a luxurious hostel, but they're also not afraid to stay in a super cheap hostel every now and again. They are mostly taking public transport wherever possible, but will happily take private transport if they deem it necessary. They will eat a mix of both local food, cooking for yourself in the hostel, and eating out in restaurants. It's like all a bit half-half. They will do most activities on offer unless it's really pushing the budget. Then they might just try and do it as cheaply as possible and they mostly drink the cheapest drinks available but will occasionally treat themselves to a fancy bevy every now and again. Now when I first went backpacking with my friends at the age of 19 I was around here on the scale. I would literally pick the cheapest hostel available on Hostel World without fail. I always tried to find the absolute cheapest food available. I would avoid taking taxis whenever I could and I would walk everywhere and take public transport everywhere even if it was kind of inconvenient. But I didn't hold myself back on much activity which is why I'm not putting myself right at the bottom of the scale. And now, at the age of 26, I would generally class myself as an average backpacker. On my Columbia trip, I definitely think I started off more like a flashbacker. My average spending per day in the first three weeks was around £40, but then I switched to somewhere around here to rein in the budget, and my average daily spending in the second half of my trip was around £29. I think I'm gonna put myself here as an average for my backpacker trip, and like I said at the start, I spent an average of £34 per day. So based on all of the information that I have just said, for Colombia specifically, this is the scale of daily budgets that I think is some what realistic. I always find that I end up being a little more bougie than I expect that I'm gonna be. So for you and working out your trip to Colombia, think about what kind of backpacker that you are. Go up one or two notches from there and you can go ahead and times that number by the number of days that you expect to be in the country. Now, since it is a good idea to budget and plan for more than you actually think you're going to spend, what I recommend doing is separately adding as additional costs any activities that you plan on doing that may be over 50 quid. So for example, one week of Spanish school is £110 more or less, 10 private salsa classes is £85 more or less, hiking the Lost City Trek is £250 more or less. Sailing to Panama from Cartagena is £450 more or less. And paragliding or white water rafting or other adrenaline activities like this are around £50 more or less. If you wanted to get real specific, because the sailing trip and the Lost City Trek for example are all inclusive, you could technically take your daily budget away for those days. So let me give you an example. In my realistic itineraries PDF guide there is an itinerary called the Columbia Classic. This itinerary takes 29 days and takes you to all the most popular backpacker spots in Colombia. This is the most common route and one month is probably the most common amount of time spent in Colombia for backpackers. If you are an average backpacker like me, you've seen my videos and you think, oh yeah, I probably travel in the same style as she does. We're going to head to our scale 
head to the middle. But like I said, if you're anything like me, you're probably gonna be a little bit more bougie than you expected. That's 34 pounds per day. Multiply that by 29 days. That brings us to 986 pounds. But hold up. I wanna do the Lost City Trek when I'm up north. So let's add another 250 pounds onto that, which brings us to 1,236 pounds. But because the Lost City Trek is all inclusive, that is four or five days where you're not gonna be spending anything else. So I'm going to take off four times 34 pounds. You still with me? Okay, four times 34 pounds is 136 pounds. So we're going to take that off our 1,236, which brings us to a grand total of 1,100 pounds. And that is what I would consider to be a realistic budget for you. And of course you can apply this logic, this method to any number of days you plan on spending the country and any style of backpacking that suits you. As you may know, I've mentioned my budget tracking spreadsheet before and a lot of you have wondered how I put it together and if it was available for use. And I just wanna let you know, I see your request for the original budget tracker spreadsheet and I raise you a much better suite of budgeting tools to cover all of your travel financial needs. If that sounds a bit fancy let me break it down. With the help of my spreadsheet genius sister I have made three budgeting tools for you to use on any future backpacking trips that you may have. So firstly we have the backpacking budget calculator. This is a tool to help you easily and accurately work out a realistic budget for whatever trip you are planning. It includes the banana budgeting guide with the backpack a financial scale laid out for 20 of the most popular backpacking destinations. Secondly, we have the backpacking budget tracker. This is a tool to help you track your spending while traveling and lets you know how well, or perhaps not, you are keeping to your budget. And thirdly, we have the globe trotter budget tracker. This is the boss level of the budget tracker and you can input up to 15 countries and currencies in one trip. It is the ultimate budget tracking tool to keep you financially savvy while you're off on the trip of a lifetime. All these items are available to to purchase now on backpackingbananas.com for these prices. But for even better value, we've put together a bundle deal where you can get all three spreadsheets for $11.99, which can be used an unlimited amount of times for all your future trips. For more information on any of these products, I've put together a tutorial video as unlisted on YouTube on exactly how they all work. And the link to that will be in the description box. Because trust me, tracking your spending is not only gonna give you peace of mind and help to relax you on your trip, but will also end up saving you money in the long run because you are confronted visually buy your spending and you can take control. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I love making these kind of videos. Managing finances can be so satisfying when done correctly, don't you think? Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.